Mr. Speaker, given that this uh, question addressed to the Minister of Health and Wellness, to ask the Doctor of the Honorable Minister of Health and Wellness whether in regard to the novel coronavirus detected in one city in the People's Republic of China, it will state A, the safety and safe security measures and surveillance system put in place in the Republic of Mauritius as precautionary measures against any risk. B, the number of times the multi-sectoral team has met and when the rapid response team has started implementing its services. And C, the number of persons suspected of presenting the symptoms thereof who can be accommodated at the new Suyak Hospital. At the very outset, I wish to thank the Honorable Leader of Opposition for addressing his first private notice question on such a sensitive issue which has an international dimension and is of great concern of one and all. Mr. Speaker, sir, at the House is aware, over the past few weeks, the world has witnessed an outbreak of the novel coronavirus, and this has quickly escalated into a public health emergency of international concern with severe repercussion worldwide. Mr. Speaker, sir, this health-related threat should cut, should cut across party line. In reply to this PNQ, I seize the opportunity to inform the House and the public at large of the various measures which the government is taking as a direct response to the global threat. Mr. Speaker, sir, indeed, I reiterate that it is our duty and responsibility as a government to continuously inform one and all of the precautionary safety measures that are being implemented to protect our nationals in Mauritius and abroad. The objective is to circumvent the backlash of a potential psychosis that people would otherwise succumb to. Mr. Speaker, sir, I wish to emphasize that we have been at the forefront and we have acted proactively to ensure public safety and well-being. And I should reaffirm that we are fully satisfied with the emergency response and the degree of preparedness of Mauritius to face risk of a potential outbreak of the virus. I would wish to reassure the House <coughs> that our response strategy has been developed in line with the recommendations of the WHO, World Health Organization, following thorough consultations with all the relevant authorities and stakeholders concerned. Mr. Speaker, sir, all throughout we have operated under the able guidance of the Honorable Prime Minister, who has chaired two interministerial committee meetings to take stock of the prevailing situation and to take decisions as appropriate. I would also have to place on record the invaluable support provided by my colleagues in our coordinated effort and also the World Health Organization throughout its representative in Mauritius as regard the implementation of the recommendations outlined by the International Health Regulations Emergency Health Committee. Mr. Speaker, sir, as part our, of our overall response plan, we have also put in place a communication strategy to continuously inform the population through the media of the all preventative actions taken by my ministry. The objective is to galvanize all efforts and to ensure a concerted, proactive, 
and co uh, coordinated approach to effectively deal with this global health uh, emergency and protect our population. All throughout, we have been guided by the need to be transparent, visible, and forward-looking in our approach. Mr. Speaker, sir, in regard to part A of the question, I wish to reassure the House that all the required safety, security, and surveillance measures have been reinforced by my ministry as soon as the first alert was reported by the Chinese authorities. For the benefit of the House, I am enumerating of some of the main measures already in force. Surveillance at Sussur Rambulam International Airport. All passengers arriving from China are systematically being screened. Body temperature of passengers is taken individually in the corridor as they may disembark from the plane. Body temperature is again taken by the thermal detector at the public health desk. A dedicated desk has been set up at the public health counter for all passengers arriving from China. Public health inspectors inquire about the health status of each and every passenger arriving from China. Health declaration forms are being verified by the sanitary authorities <coughs> at the airport. The airport medical post is on alert on a 24 hours basis. A dedicated and fully equipped ambulance service is on standby at the airport on a 24 hour basis to cater for any emergency. All healthcare providers at the airport are fully equipped with personal protective equipment. Furthermore, protective equipment is also available in case there is any, any need to transfer suspected cases to Suyak Hospital. Exit screening of body temperature is being carried out invariably for all passengers traveling back to China. Surveillance at the seaport. Mr. Speaker, sir, at the seaport, the following measures are in operation. Passengers traveling by cruise ships and private yachts are automatically subjected to body temperature, check both on departure and arrival. The same measures are also applicable for staff members of cruise ships. Surveillance is being carried out for all crew members of cargo ships, including shipping fishing vessels. In, Mr. Speaker, sir, in addition, all passengers traveling from China are invariably and systematically put on surveillance, quarantine, or isolation for a period of 14 days. These passengers are closely monitored. Mr. Speaker, sir, as regard to part B of the question, I wish to inform the House that a multi-sectoral team and a rapid response team have been in existence for more than a decade within the structure of the public health division of my ministry. As such, following the outbreak of the coronavirus, the intersectoral team has so far met on two occasions. The rapid response team is, on the other hand, is on alert at all times. Mr. Speaker, sir, the House would wish to note that the two meetings were held jointly by the my ministry and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Furthermore, the Secretary to Cabinet and Head of the Civil Service chaired a coordination meeting with officials of my ministry and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to ensure a harmonized approach by all stakeholders. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, Furthermore, 
on Friday, 31st January, and on Sunday, 2nd February, 2020, the Honorable Prime Minister chaired two consecutive high-level meetings to take stock of the measures already in force, as well as to take additional measures to contain the risk of the virus reaching our territory. During these two meetings, the World Health Organization representative in Mauritius reaffirmed that the measures being taken by the government of Mauritius are fully in compliance with WHO norms and standards. Mr. Speaker, sir, may I at this stage recall that in April 2019, government brought important amendments to the Immigration Act, <coughs> Act Number no. 3 of 2019, to widen the definition of prohibited immigrant. These amendments were criticized by the then opposition, who considered them undemocratic and unfair. I wish to inform the House that pursuant to Section 8.1n of the Immigration Act, the Honorable Prime Minister has the power to declare persons or persons <coughs> Or classes of persons are prohibited immigrants if their presence in Mauritius is likely to be prejudicial to public and health. This is the very situation in which we find ourselves with the public health emergency of international concern which the novel virus represents. Unlike countries like Singapore, which had to enact regulation to deal with the public health emergency, this government, with the foresight of the Honorable Prime Minister, was ready. On 2nd January 2020, the Honorable Prime Minister, acting on reliable information and advice, took appropriate action under Section 8.1n of the Immigration Act to deem as prohibited immigrants, passengers traveling from uh, China or persons who 14 days prior to their arrival in Mauritius had traveled to China. As regard to part C of the question, I wish to inform the House that the facilities for isolation and quarantine at Suyak Hospital were, were put in place in 2010 and were then designed to accommodate some 60 persons. These facilities have now been upgraded by my ministry to accommodate up to 36 persons. Provisions is also being made for an additional of 20 beds. Mr. Speaker, sir, government is leaving no stone unturned to protect our citizens from such unwarranted risk that may be unleashed by such public health emergency of international concern. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, the Honourable Minister has been very extensive. I take it for granted that uh, additional time will be allocated to us in spirit of fairness. Now, I thank the Minister, but I didn't expect him to be provocative. Let me, uh, there was no need to introduce any, uh, any element of political partisanship in the reply that we have given. Let me impress upon the Minister from the House that this outbreak has reached a stage of pandemic. And I expect, and I would have expected government to have reacted properly. Can I ask the Minister, why is it that the rapid response team did not react properly. There was an, a late onset. There was no distribution of N95 masks to personal working at points of entry. I mean the sea and the airport. No protective dress, no goggles, no dedicated ambulance to uh, fairly suspected cases. The number of patients who, did, who, who do not display signs and symptoms and besides, there are many carriers who have mixed uh, at large with the community. Is he aware of this? Has there been 
uh, proper medical uh, contact of all these people because these people have traveled to Mauritius and they have come since almost three weeks. And up to three weeks, nothing has been done and nothing effective has been done. Mr. Speaker, sir, I think the leader of opposition, I don't know where he's living. The, uh, <laughs> you should, we should all be aware that the outbreak started as from 6th January. Can you imagine, as from 20th January, we have already put in place all our, our mechanism to respond for an emergency service. Mr. Speaker, sir, you, whenever there is a pandemic outbreak, we have to take three measures. One of the measures is a screening at the airport because the virus is not in Mauritius. The virus is abroad. It's the way we contain the disease in Mauritius. This is what we have been doing. We have also been doing the surveillance. Do you know that more than 3,000 passengers have been under surveillance for the last one month. Mm. This is an ongoing process. This process is being done by the public health authorities. The sanitary division do that. I wish the leader of the opposition travel frequently. You have a yellow card. At the, before we coming to Mauritius in the flight, you have to fill up that yellow card. And that yellow card, will, you have to write where is your destination in Mauritius, whether you are suffering from any disease. And do you know, if it's in the Public Health Act, if you don't write this proper, properly, you commit an offense. Measures are taken for the screening, proper measures. In the world, we are one of the countries, four countries who have acted proactively. It's not only so. Our surveillance is, is, is being done at a regular interval. All passengers coming to Mauritius, they have surveillance done on the next day that they reach Mauritius, on the fourth day, on the eighth day, on the twelfth day. Besides this, the other surveillance is being done on the fourth. <laughs> I wish, I wish they, give, they give me the opportunity. I'm a new member of the assembly. And they are senior members. That's the way they are reacting. Ah. Ah. Mr. Speaker, sir. So we have all the measures. The WHO has already validated our systems of functioning. And they have given us credit. We have been given credit for all the facilities we are making available. I think that answers the question of the leaders of the opposition. Honourable yeah, <coughs> members, ministers, you. So that does does it mean that we have to allow him to sleep for another fortnight? The outbreak, <laughs> when was the outbreak detected? On the 6th. And when did they start to react? On the 20th. On the opposition side. We <laughs> stated to the nation that measures had to be taken. And we were impressed upon the Prime Minister to set up the high-powered ministerial committee. He failed to do so, and the multi-sectoral committee met on twice, and in the meantime, there was delayed response from the uh, rapid response team, with the consequence that there are many people shedding the virus in the community. Mr. Speaker, sir, again, the leader of opposition is a doctor. He should know what is the incubation period. He should know that if a virus, you or somebody has contracted the virus, it will take only 14 days to have the manifestation. We are abiding to the guidelines of the World Health Organization. No country in the world has admitted patients as from the 21st. We are the first country who has already put the quarantine measures. I think this is aberrant to see that the, leaders of, or the leader of opposition is putting such an argument. I'm sorry to say that taking him as a doctor, he should know the public health measures whenever there is an epidemiology. He should know how measures should be taken. He should know also what are the precautionary measures. What is important is the screening and surveillance. And now at this point of time, not to make politics, 
not to make demog demagogy. I believe that they don't have a virus of demagogy because the virus of demagogy is going, is going to be very effective. I have seen that in the, last, uh, in the previous session and I believe that they act responsibly. We are all here to inform the population, to clarify, to clarify this is an important issue and not make a demagogy out of the subject which has uh, an international concern. Wow. Wow. Mr. Mr. Speaker, sir, is the minister aware that he should have been the last person to say that there is compliance to biosafety and biosecurity measures? Do you know, minister, that he went uh, to the airport, he paid a visit there, and you know he was not even dressed, he was not even wearing the protective dress. What he did was wearing his Pierre Cardia suit to take the temperature of pain. Is this the job of a minister? Is this the job of a minister to take the temperature of the infrastructure to, to teach us and to tell us what is the intubation phase? Right? So, can I ask the, can I ask the minister? Is he aware that since three weeks prior to the Luda festivals, there are many passengers from China who have landed in Mauritius. There, there are many pa passengers who have landed in Mauritius. And can I ask him what has been done in respect of contact tracing and medical uh, surveillance? And yet, nothing. And let me tell him the way he's acting. Can I ask him? Can I ask him whether, he, he, whether he's the type of person who is acting like an arsonist? with a tinder box on one hand and a box of matches on the other hand. Is this the policy of government? Is this the government which is going to solve this problem? Mr. Speaker, sir, again, I have to make an emphasis that in the airport, whatever be the protective uh, you have to use is a mask. This is the only way. I have to remind the House the transmission of the virus is by droplets. Droplets means whatever, whenever you are speaking, whatever is coming from your mouth, and if anybody else inhale that, this is the protective measure you have to take on. And you don't have to wear the gown or any other suits that you need to wear. The protective measures have been taken. You know, you can't make people afraid at the airport and start wearing all types of gowns. In Mauritius, one point has to be noted. We haven't yet had one single case of the coronavirus. There is no case of the coronavirus. And why make this become an alarming situation that, you know, that as from today, people will start creating havoc. This is, doesn't mean responsible. This doesn't mean that you're acting as per what has been recommended by the WHO organization. My second point, again, Mr. Speaker, sir, we are doing the screening. If ever the leader of opposition is, uh, opposition is pointing out that the, uh, passengers have been traveling for the last, you know, for the uh, festival, uh, festival, uh, uh, yes. So th they have been tra uh, traveling, yes, but there is a surveillance. We should have already have so many, you know, travelers having been contacted the virus. Unfortunately, not because our surveillance system is working. Is uh, unfortunately there has been no uh, uh, passengers having any of the virus because we have a proper surveillance. It doesn't mean that tomorrow, for all passengers, there are surveillance. It's not new for us, for the government, to act now when the virus has come as a pandemic, as an epidemic uh, issue. Fortunately, unfortunate minister, <laughs> can I come to see the minister when a patient is admitted? Do we have the reagent to check the virus? Yet, no reagent is available, no PCR. Secondly. As to the ward, to the isolation ward, can, I, can the minister tell us whether the isolation ward is a, what we call, negative pressure accredited ward? And he should know that. If it is not negative pressure accredited ward, 
Therefore, it is not free from germs. And the government has to assume its responsibility because as far as I know, and, and, and I would ask him again, will he be able to inform the House whether the ward is an accredited a negative pressure ward? If no, then you have to assume your responsibility. Mr. Speaker, sir. The W guidelines set out for the WHO guidelines set out for for this. This is a new virus. This is a new virus. In China, the virus was detected on six of the last month, on six of January. So you have to get time to get the reagents. It's a new reagent. And do you know that Mauritius has already received the reagent? The test, you have to be updated. The reagent is already available in Mauritius. The test can be done. The test can be done as from today. We are already having the reagent. Now, I will answer the second part of the question, the negative pressure room that should be available. This is in line. Not all countries, none of the countries in the African region is having such a ursa except in, uh, in an Iranian island. It's going to take time for that. If we have the government, the ministry is already working on the project to have the negative pressure room in our hospital. Can I take it for granted that we don't have an accredited uh, negative pressure ward? which means that the risk of infection is very high. And I lay the blame fair and square on this government. And there is coronavirus in this country. And they have to assume their responsibility. Where, where the answer to see? I'm still waiting for answer to see. Where the answer to see? He's chosen to run away. He's chosen not to reply. And he's chosen as a minister to fail, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sir. Again, I have to mention here, in the WHO recommendation, there is no imperative need to have an emergency, urgent procurement of a negative pressure accommodation for, for, for those suffering from the ENCO virus. It is more important. We have to address our issues more on screening and in uh, screening and in surveillance. Quarantine in USA, India, all that, we don't have negative pressure room. Why should we say that the negative pressure room is so important? At this stage, I still consider it is important to see that the screening has been done, and again, the surveillance is done perfectly. Can I ask the minister to see to it that all information is relayed to the public. From the replies it has given, it stands to reason that government has not lived up to the expectation of the people. They took time to set up the response, uh, the, the, the response, rapid response team. They took time to set up the high-powered committee, and they have done nothing in an effective manner. Can I impress upon him to make up for time loss, to address the matters in an effective and reliable matter, manner, because it is the interest of the public that we have to serve, and it is the interest of the public that is at stake here, Mr. Speaker, sir. And as far as I see is concerned, again, the public has to know that he has not replied to the question. I again, there is, I again stress on the honorable leader of oppositions that I've, I've addressed all the questions and I've put it a point. Already the ministry has been communicated on a very you know, broad approach. Public is very much aware what is the situation analysis in Mauritius. All information is being given in a transparent, straightforward, and in an active manner. The Mauritian public is fully aware what has been the status of Mauritius. I again reassure the House, I again reassure the Mauritian public, 
that we don't have any coronavirus disease in Mauritius. And for that, we have to thank the coordinated approach of the government, of all the stakeholders, of the, um, the ministry, the, 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 uh, the, the, the personnel working in the ministry for doing the work, for doing all whatever is we are doing in, in order to combat the entry of the virus. Press upon the minister if he read, if he's really caring of medical personnel and paramedic personnel, can he see to it that they have the N95 protective mask, that they have a protective, uh, protective dress and wear, that the reagent is available, that the reagent, the reagent is not available? And can I ask him to reply to the question C? which he has failed to do so. In so doing, can I reiterate what I've said? This government is putting at risk, this government is putting at risk the health status of the people of the Republic of Mauritius. And I will say it again, this government has failed to live up to the expectation of the nation. Mr. Speaker, sir, again, I reassure the House that we have more than 800 N95 mask in the Ministry of Health. We have already procured 5,000 5, masks and we have already ordered 7,000 masks. The old, it's not the first time that we are, uh, we are having an outbreak of an epidemic disease. We know it with Ebola, we know it with dengue, we, we know it. We have a huge experience and how should we face it? The country is prepared to face such a situation. The Honorable Minister should know. Recently we had the Ebola outbreak. Recently we had the MERS cold. And not far away that we have the SARS virus also. They should know very well. They should know better what is happening. And all the, the, the personnel is fully equipped. We have all the equipment for them and I think that my, uh, the personnel of the Ministry of Health is doing a wonderful job and they are doing all whatever should be done at the screening and the surveillance level. Thank you. Honorable Leader of the Opposition, before I give you the last question, a few members have expressed the wish to put a few questions. If you allow, please. Can I impress upon government, since this is an issue that is cross-cutting and is of national and international interest, I would have expected government as a responsible government to invite members of the opposition to sit in the committee because this is an issue that cut across political barrier but they have chosen to make it a partisan issue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, sir. I would like to know from the minister whether he's aware of the report of the University of Southampton stating that Mauritius is the third country most exposed, uh, receiving air airline travelers from 18 high risk cities in China. And he, if he has dared to find out how many Mauritians are exposed in China uh, regarding the virus, and if there is any Mauritian that has already contacted the virus in China. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'm fully aware of the report of the Southampton University classifying Mauritius as the third most vulnerable country in Africa to, you know, to, this is obviously will be vulnerable because we have an open economy, we have flights everywhere from the world, the passengers traveling in our, uh, from our, uh, f coming to Mauritius and going, it's a huge volume, obviously. That has no, we don't need any study to know that. And what we should, they should congratulate us. Even though we are among the most vulnerable countries, yet we have not a single case of coronavirus in Mauritius. I also here to, um, I also have to add here, all the measures have been taken, especially to screen patients, to screen passengers, at the airport and the port. Now, I also have to address that I'll have to table this document to see what are the different equipments for the personnel that we do have in, uh, in the Ministry of Health. Thank you. Honorable Amya Amya.
My, my question was about how many Mauritian is abroad in China and if ever there is any Mauritian contaminated. He no, hasn't answered to my question. Order, please resume your seat. Yeah. Honorable Amia Amia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. So if I can take this question, can the Honorable Minister give us an update on Mauritian national living in China and more precisely in, in Wuhan, what is the situation for these Mauritian nationals? Thank you. Now, about the Mauritian living in China, we have around 180. This has been informed by my colleague, Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. Now, about the Mauritian in Wuhan, there was 14, 20 Mauritians in Wuhan. Out of them, three were already in Mauritius. 12 Mauritians have decided to come to Mauritius. Arrangements have been made through the Embassy of France, and those Mauritians, 12 Mauritians are, Mauritians, are already in France, where they are going through the quarantine, and then they'll be, uh, they'll be coming back to Mauritius in two weeks. Two weeks, hopefully. Honorable Bagwan. Hello, Mr. Speaker. Can I know from the Honorable Minister, what are the special security measures taken at the Suliak Hospital, which is now become a center for government, especially in terms of security and equipment we have been made that there are new equipment, but also the use of Suliak Hospital for, as an eye hospital, it will be used as an eye hospital. What are the new measures taken for patients which are not going to uh, Suliak Hospital now, and especially the security measures for the personnel and uh, people of the region in Suyak. Yes. Mr. Speaker, sir, Suyak Hospital has been validated to accommodate patients suffering from any contagious disease from long time back. 2014, the hospital was already validated by the WHO to have all the precautions and uh, equipment needed to face any epidemic uh, disease. Now, the uh, Suyak Hospital, there is one uh, floor where there are 16 beds. Those 16 beds are meant for isolation. Isolation means for treatment as well. Out of them, there are for acute resuscitative apparatus for four patients. Now, we have additional wards. As the situation is going to be presented, we are going to accommodate other wards for uh, accommodating uh, patients. Besides this, if ever the need to be to convert the whole hospital as an isolation quarantine hospital, the ministry will move to do so. I have to remind members that in such a situation, what is more important, how you isolate patients. Not everybody is going to need acute resuscitative measures, but if one day we have a patient, we have to get appropriate treatment, we have to ensure that patients are safe, there is no uh, moving out of the patient, and there is that those patients are fully isolated. This is the most important thing, and this has been done, is being done at Suyak Hospital. Last question, the developer John. Can I ask the Honorable Minister to escalate and step up biosecurity and biosafety measures. Because as matters stand, Mauritius is on, has been categorized as a very high-risk country. And we know very well also that the outbreak has now become pandemic. Yes. Mauritius, the government has taken all the measures. You could remind that yesterday, the Prime Minister has an interministerial, a high-level committee where important measures have been taken to ensure the safety of the Mauritius population. I reassure again that government is taking all measures to screen, to screen passengers who might be all suspected to have all the virus. And I think the government is doing a very good job and all measures are being implemented in a, in a widespread in a, in a, in a, in a intention. Time is over. 